I try to look at the world through the lens of computing. Let's talk about the internet. Whenever we plan an intervention, a knowledge campaign, a recruitment drive, mostly the modality that we invariably turn to is the internet and the social media. We rely a lot on the internet. Let me ask a naive question. Does the internet of today exclude anyone? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. It excludes one third of the world population. That is 2.9 billion people across the globe. Let that sink in. These people are either too poor to afford the internet, too remote to access the internet, or too low literate to use the mostly text-driven internet. And these 2.9 billion people are disproportionately spread across the globe and mostly reside in the developing countries. All right, so the question is that now as we move on and we drill down through these stats, we find that it's worse than it seems at the first sight. More men than women use the internet. More urban than rural have access to the internet. More literate than low literate have access to the internet. The list of digital divides goes on and on and on. So the big question is, how do we reach these offline populations? Television and radio are non-interactive. Your text messages imply literacy. Your smartphones mostly imply digital literacy. But we have a ray of hope. Phones, mobile phones, have become nearly pervasive throughout the world. Now, that does not mean that everyone owns a phone or everyone has a cellular connection, but a large fraction of the world population has access to some sort of a mobile phone. And when I say mobile phones, I do not mean smartphones. I mean those simple, non-smart, dumb phones that you can use to make a phone call or to receive a phone call. Now, on top of the phone, how do we reach them? Well, we have another ray of hope. People around the world mostly speak and listen. That's how they live their lives. That's how they mostly conduct their business. So speech over simple phones could be a viable way of reaching the offline populations. Such services are known as IVR services, interactive voice response. Remember the last time you called your telco to top up your airtime balance? To top up your balance, press one. For more information, press two. To have a life, hang up this call. We knew all of this uh, back in early 2000s. We tried out these services for reaching the offline populations, hoping for them to work like a charm. They didn't. And we ran into the secondary hurdles of usability, motivation, and trust, and spread. We thought that people would be able to figure out how to use the speech interfaces. They didn't. It, it was apparent that they needed explicit training. And explicit training is not scalable. You can train 100 or 1,000 people in your lab, but it's not as easy to train 100,000 people. Another problem was of motivation and trust. How do you convince a farmer in rural Sindh or in sub-Saharan Africa to give up their age-old practices of farming and trust you? And then finally, how do you take your service and advertise it to populations who are underconnected by definition? This challenge is what I took on as part of my PhD in 2012 at Carnegie Mellon with my advisor, Ronnie Rosenfeld, and our collaborators in Pakistan led by Professor Omar Saif. So we came up with a strategy. And the strategy was entertainment. Entertainment is a universal motivator. You don't need to convince anyone that they need entertainment, they know. We also knew from previous research out of Microsoft Research India that when someone has a strong motivation to be entertained, they would overcome any and all sorts of user interface barriers. They're going to self-train themselves. They're going to figure it out. And then finally, if you create something which is fun, catchy, and interesting, people are going to become your ambassadors and make the thing go viral. So our strategy was 
to use viral entertainment as a vehicle, as a conduit for disseminating development-related information. And we created Poly, Mia Mitu and Urdu. That was our first service. So Poly is an IVR service, a speech over phone service that allows users to make a short recording of their voice, modify it using a bunch of funny voice modifications, and then forward the modified version to their friends. As simple as that. Let me show you a demo. Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Now you can change your voice in a different way. Just beep after the beep, and press the hash button. Hello, Arif. What are you doing? Are you going to go to your house or not? Or are you going to go to your house? Are you ready to listen to your voice in a different way? Take this. Hello, Arif. What are you doing? Are you going to go to your house or not? दोबारा रिकॉर्ड करने के लिए सिफर दबाएं, दोबारा सुनने के लिए एक दबाएं, ये आवाज किसी को भेजने के लिए दो दबाएं, अगली आवाज सुनने के लिए तीन दबाएं, मुलाजमत के इश्तेहारात मुफ्त सुनने के लिए पांच दबाएं, जिन्हें भेजना चाहते हैं उनका नंबर मिलाएं और आखिर में हैश का बटन दबाएं। बीप की आवाज के बाद अपना नाम बोलें क्योंकि आपकी आवाज के साथ आपका नाम भी भेजा जाएगा फहद और भी किसी को भेजने के लिए एक दबाएं वरना दो दबाएं। शुक्रिया मिया मिठू जल्द ही आपका पैगाम पहुंचा देगा अब आप अपनी बाकी शरारत भरी आवाजें सुने हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम। मिया मिठू को आपके लिए एक पैगाम दिया गया है भेजने वाले ने मिया मिठू को अपना नाम बताया है फहद और वो पैगाम ये है इस पैगाम के भेजने वाले का फोन नंबर सुनने के लिए सिफर दबाएं, पैगाम दोबारा सुनने के लिए एक दबाएं, दोस्तों को भेजने के लिए दो दबाएं, जवाब देने के लिए असलामेकुम अब आप घर बैठे अखबार के ताजा तरीन इश्तेहार बिल्कुल मुफ्त सुन सकते हैं ये इश्तेहार छब्बीस अगस्त दो हजार बारह को जंग अखबार में दिया गया लाहौर डिफेंस में ड्राइवर की आसानी खाली है इस मुलाजमत के ख्वाहिशमंद अफराज इस नंबर पर रबता करें पाँच 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 सिफर तीन सिफर एक पाँच इफ यू हैिंग केयरफुल we gave the users something useful, the job audio browser. We observed that in the daily newspapers in Pakistan, there are a bunch of ads which were suitable for people who are low literate. However, those very people, unfortunately, are not able to read those ads. So we thought, okay, let's make that our first development service. We recorded those ads and made them available through Poly for audio browsing. We seeded the service by giving the phone number to five low literate office boys at Lums. We did not give them any demo or explanation. We just asked them, Here are, here's a phone number, call it, see what happens. Four out of five called. And then this happened. Within a year and without any further advertisement, Polly had received 636,000 phone calls in which 165,000 users participated. At its peak, Polly was spreading to 1,000 new people every day and we had to severely throttle the usage because we simply could not sustain the airtime funds. Not just that, 34,000 of these people also started using the job ad service and listened 386,000 times to the 728 ads available in the system. So now that we knew that Poly works as a mechanism to train the users, engage the users and introduce them to something useful, we started trying out Poly in a bunch of other scenarios. In 2014, at the peak of the Ebola crisis in West Africa, we launched Poly in collaboration with the U.S. Embassy in Kanakri, uh, in, in, in Guinea, which was one of the three um, impacted countries. We used Poly to spread reliable information about Ebola, originating from the CDC in 11 local languages, with IVR services, multilingual interfaces are just not a problem. In 2017, we launched Poly again in Pakistan, and this time we wanted to use it to spread information about a maternal health hotline. 
We, in fact, compared Poly against everything else that was available to us to do the similar advertisement. So we tried out targeted ads on Facebook. We tried ads on television and radio. We tried distributing flyers inside hospitals and at bus stops. We tried displaying posters behind auto rickshaws. And we also tried telemarketing robocalls. Poly performed the best out of all of these modalities in terms of bringing in the highest number of users who engaged meaningfully with the advertised service. We then started building other services on top of Poly. So Bang was our first IVR-based social media platform. Think of it as an IVR version of Reddit. So users could call in, record their messages. Others could listen to these messages, vote them up or down by pressing keys, give their audio comments and feedback, forward these messages to others, and share the content with others. During the pandemic, we used Bang to spread information about COVID uh, throughout Pakistan. Karamad was our latest service. It's a crowdsourcing platform. So this is where users could call in and they could actually earn money through mobile top-ups by answering survey questions, doing small tasks like audio translations. It was also our first service that broke the airtime subsidy barrier. So users paid for their own airtime. However, needless to say, these IVR services are no silver bullets. They have uh, challenges of their own. The first and foremost logistic challenge being that of the airtime. We cannot make our users or expect them to pay for the airtime. They cannot afford it. But then, who pays? Another challenge that we found was low participation of women. So these services, when deployed throughout the world, we found that there was not more than 5 to 10% of participation from women. So collaborating with a friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Aditya Vashista at Cornell, we looked at the user behavior in two of these services, Sangeetswara in India and Bang in Pakistan. And we found that women on these platforms are exposed to unwelcoming behavior in the form of flirting and threats and abuses that turn them away. So right now, making these platforms inclusive towards women is a major research direction in this domain. Professor Kentaro Tayoma, who's a professor of information sciences at uh, the University of Michigan High School, describes technology as an amplifier of human intent and ability. So whatever we aim for as individuals and collectives, technology has the ability to amplify that. So while the social media can easily amplify the reach of good information, it can also as easily amplify the reach of misinformation. So we won't be wrong in saying that the ancient battle between good and evil still wages just in newer, bigger, and fancier battlefields. So let's join the battle. Let's strive for an accessible, inclusive and equitable information ecosystem. Thank you so much for your time.